Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vivek Laha and today we are going to discuss Big ML Penalty Method to solve a linear programming problem. So the outline of this talk is how to convert a minimization LPP into a maximization LPP, use of slack and surplus variables, use of artificial variables, why we call it a Big M or Penalty Method. So let us start with a minimization problem. We can convert this minimization problem into a maximization problem by changing the sign of the coefficients in the objective function. That is, we can change the maximization problem. See, the objective function for the minimization problem was z equal to 5x1 plus 3x2 now for the maximization problem is minus 5x1 minus 3x2. Now this maximization problem uh, can be converted into a standard form by adding slack or surplus variables. So with this inequality constraints we add a slack variable for less than or equal to inequality constraint we add slack variable or greater than or equal to inequality constant, we subtract the surplus variables and then we convert this into equality constants. Now, uh, the coefficients associated with the slack and surplus variables in the objective function will be equal to 0. Now, this uh, problem is not in the canonical form, so we have to convert this problem into canonical form by adding some extra variables with uh, and these variables are known as artificial variables. So here uh, with the equality constraint uh, 2x1 plus 2x2 equal to 0 we add this arti we add this artificial variable a1 and with this uh, surplus variable s2 we add this artificial variable a2. So whenever we have a equality constant, we can add these artificial variables to convert the problem into canonical form and with the surplus variables, we have to always add these artificial variables. And take uh, coefficients associated with the artificial variables in the uh, objective function will be minus m and this m is a very large quantity which is uh, known as a huge penalty associated with the artificial variables. This is because whenever this artificial variable leaves the basis, it will never be able to enter the basis due to this large penalty and that is why this is known as a big M or penalty method. Now, uh, this is the canonical form of the given problem by applying uh, slack variables, surplus variables and artificial variables and providing this uh, uh, huge penalty to the artificial variables. Now this uh, canonical form of the linear programming problem can be uh, written in tabular form. So you can see the co uh, column associated with this z star is 1000 0, 0, 0, with this s1 is 0100 0, 0. Uh, and with A1 it should be 0010 0, and with A2 it should be 0001. But due to presence of this uh, huge penalty is uh, it, it is not in the standard form of the identity matrix. So we have to perform certain operations or uh, Gaussian eliminations to convert it into a standard form or canonical form. So if we add this uh, row 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and multiply it with m and then uh, uh, subtract it from this uh, row 0, 0.0 then our desired identity matrix will be obtained so and this will be the uh, identity matrix that is 1 0, 0, 0. the column associated with s1 is 0, 1, 0, 0. with a1 it is 0, 0, 1, 0. and with a2 it will be 0, 0, 0, 1. So the basic variables are S1, A1 and A2 and hence the non-basic variables are X1, X2 and S2. Now we have to test the optimality. See in the first in the first row the, these are the non 
basic variables x1, x2 and s2 and the coefficient associated with this is minus 5 minus 7 so m being a very large quantity this minus 7 m is a negative quantity and similarly 3 minus 4 m is also a negative quantity and this m is a positive quantity now we have to compare in between x1 and x2 that is c, c minus 5 minus 7 m is a very large quantity and since this minus 7 m is less than minus 4 m this uh, 5 minus 7 m is the most negative value and hence x1 will be the entering basic variable now since x1 is the entering basic variable we have to test the uh, uh, minimum ratio test for the leaving basic variable so what we will do this right hand side and this is the column associated with the entering basic variable so we take 12 by 2 which is 6 and 10 by 2 which is 5 and 10 by 5 which is 2 and the minimum quantity is 2 here so by minimum ratio test the uh, leaving basic variable will be a2 that is leaving basic variable so now we have this leaving basic variable so what we have to do we have to interchange the column of a2 and the column of uh, this x1 so by Gaussian elimination we have to interchange the column of a2 and column of x1 so see in this a2 here here we need 1 so if we divide this 1 by 3 by 5 we will get the desired column and then these are the operation which we have to perform so in performing these operations we will have this new table so this is table number 2 and again in table number 2 we have to check whether this is optimal or not so here the non basic variables are x2 and here it is s2 and here it is a2 now the coefficient associated with a2 is a positive quantity with s2 it is negative and with x2 it is also negative but the most negative is this uh, 5 minus 6 m by 5 so x2 will be the entering basic variables now again we have to check the uh, you know, column of uh, x2 and uh, with this right hand side we have to perform the minimum ratio test so if you perform this minimum ratio test we can see that here it is 2.5 so this is the minimum value so this s1 will be the leaving basic variable so if s1 is the leaving basic variable we have to interchange the column of s1 and x2 we have to interchange the column of x1 and s2 so this is the interchange we have to do this interchange so in place of this 16 by 5 we must have 1 so it is obtained by multiplying this with 5 by 16 and then uh, accordingly we have to perform all the other uh, Gaussian eliminations and if we perform these eliminations we will have this new table number 3 now in this new table number 3 what we have to check whether this is of here you see the basic variables are x2, a1 and x1 now the x2 and x1 so what are the non basic variables this s1 is a non basic variable s2 is a non basic variable and this uh, a2 is a non basic variable and we can see the negative quantity associated with the non basic variable s2 so this s2 will be the entering basic variable we have to take the column of this s2 and the right hand side to perform the minimum ratio test so in the minimum ratio test we will see that the uh, see this uh, s2 and see this one is negative so this uh, ratio is will be not defined so this is the minimum value so minimum value is associated with the artificial variable a1 so it will be the leaving basic variable so a1 see the column of a1 will be interchanged with this s2 because s2 will be the 
entering basic variables. So in this place, 1 by 4, we need 1. So we multiply 3 by 2 with 4 and then perform all the other eliminations accordingly. These are the uh, operations we have to perform and then we will have this uh, next uh, table number 4. Now in the table number 4 you see the x2, s2 and x1 are the basic variable. What are the non-basic variables? s1 is a non-basic variable, a1 and a2 are the non-basic variables and you can see the coefficients associated with these non-basic variables in the for initial row is m this is 10 and minus 35 by 10 which is also positive and 1 is positive. So all the uh, coefficients in the first row associated with the non-basic variables are positive. So this is an optimal solution. So you see this optimal solution is often like this. So z star is minus 23 which is obtained at x2 equal to 1, x1 is 4 and s2 is 12. So, uh, so since z star is minus 23, then z will be 23, which is the optimal solution of the linear programming problem. And we obtain this optimal solution by uh, big M penalty method. So, uh, let me recall the summary of this presentation. We express the LPP in the standard form by adding slack variables, surplus variables, and or artificial variables. Assign a zero coefficient to both slack and surplus variables in the objective function. Assign a very large coefficient minus m for this maximization case to artificial variables in the objective function. Then the initial basic physical solution is obtained by assigning zero values to the non basic decision variables and of course solving the other uh, variables if all the entries in the uh, initial row associated with the non-basic variables are non-negative, then the basic feasible solution is optimal. So we can check this optimality if it is not optimal. Otherwise, locate the most negative entry in the initial row associated with the non-basic variable. If in the corresponding column all the entries are negative, then we will not be able to perform the minimum ratio test and the LPP will have an unbounded optimal solution. So in this way we can locate an unbounded optimal solution of the linear programming problem. Now the most negative entry in the initial row associated with a non-basic variable gives us the entering basic variable. We can locate the entering basic variable like this. Now the leaving basic variable is decided by the minimum ratio test. We know this. How we perform this minimum ratio test by the right hand side is divided by the column associated with the uh, entering basic variables. Of course, the entries must be positive. And the columns of entering basic variable and the leaving basic variable are interchanged by this Gaussian elimination. We have to perform this Gaussian elimination. Then we continue this process until we get an optimal solution. Now in the optimal table, if in the optimal table at least one artificial variable is present with zero value, then the LPP will have no solution. So we can uh, test this no solution case by using this uh, method and then if in the optimal table at least one artificial variable is present with positive value, then the LPP will have no optimal solution. So this no optimal solution case is also there. So in this way, we can use uh, this big M penalty method to solve a linear programming problem. Thank you for joining.